Buju, come on in. Welcome to my studio. Have a look around. I'm Jonathan Thunder, animator and artist. Uh, welcome to my studio here in Duluth, Minnesota, where I animate and create uh, artwork. Been blessed to have the opportunity to create uh, animations that teach the Ojibwe language. So I was born in Red Lake on the uh, uh, Red Lake uh, Chippewa Indian Reservation. And um, when I was about two, we moved to the Twin Cities where I was raised. I knew that I wanted to be an artist when I was in the third grade. I was, uh, I was given an assignment to draw a happy face and a sad face. And I didn't know how to do it. I couldn't figure out how to draw uh, this happy and sad face. So I went home and I was sitting at the kitchen table, obviously flustered, trying to do my homework. And uh, my mom said, what are you working on, son? So she comes over and I told her what the assignment was. And she said, well, try it like this. So she sits down and she draws a circle with a little sad face in it, almost like an emoji, and then a circle with a little happy face in it. And like to my third grade brain, that was brilliant. Like it just blew my mind completely. I remember staring at it in such amazement that uh, I vividly remember it being a child and thinking, I wanna be as great an artist as my mom is. When I start an animation project, I will be approached with an idea and uh, that idea often is turned into a script. So um, I'll get it in script form and uh, usually uh, go by the rule that um, one page equals about 60 seconds of uh, screen time. Once we get down a game plan on how to execute it visually, uh, I'll sit down and do you know, a sketch similar to this sketch that I did with just a big pencil like that. This sketch I scanned into uh, my workstation here with my scanner and then um, I pulled it up into uh, Photoshop, which is generally where I do a lot of my coloring and layering and that will um, usually be in layers. So like the head will be a layer uh, and then I'll go through and kind of make the body, you know, the arms are often on multiple layers. So that way I can, uh, if, you know, if anything needs to be animated. And then once I have that, then I'll go ahead and create an environment. So I'll put her on a bench, you know, kind of give it some shading. Also, uh, you know, like to create nice environments for them. So you can sort of see where, uh, where they are in the setting to kind of give you a visual lead up to what, you know, the story is gonna be about. From there, what I will do is open up a program called Adobe. After Effects and uh, After Effects is pretty much Photoshop on wheels and that's where I'll do a lot of my animation keyframe work stuff like that and start to bring these characters to life. I'll get some uh, voiceover work and then those those show up here as these little individual voiceover files. <laughs> this is a scene where uh, this elder is going to be asking this young lady, look over there, what is, you know, like that bird doing? Or look over there, what is, what are those puppies doing? So I thought it would be cute to have uh, the elder sort of point with her lips before she starts to speak. Back home, I remember, uh, you know, my grandma used to always point with her lips. It was kind of a, something that I really remember about her. I usually have about three or four different poses for the mouth. So I'll start to do the kind of the lip sync, they call it. And then um, here you can roughly see that, uh, you know, the lips are sort of moving. And then what I'll do is go in and then just try to time it up to the voice. And then I'll just give it a little test. Once I got an animation uh, kind of in progress and it's looking good, I'll usually render it out so uh, I can sort of see what my animation's looking like so far. This is it kind of in real time. Once that's put together, I compile all of the uh, animations 
in my editing program, you can see that there's uh, layers and layers of like audio, uh, sound design, which is like little ambient noises, and then I'll, you know, I'll go in and um, uh, select some nice music. I also like to put in sort of ambience, which is always nice. These guys will be in a park. So I have this nice clip of, uh, you know, like birds in a park or something like that. So then I line them up and then um, once I get things kind of all put together, what I'll do is I'll go in and from the script, I'll kind of put a placeholder uh, subtitle here where uh, the script is gonna line up with what's happening on the screen. And then uh, that's how I know where to put my VO. And that way I can go through and check things shot for shot to make sure that we're like going down our shot list and taking care of everything that we need. So that not only is the story being told um, for this particular uh, animation being a lesson, you know, the lesson is being delivered in a format that makes sense. And uh, once I get that all in place, what you have is... Animation magic. This drawing is uh, based on a picture of my grandma that I have here. It was a gal who uh, is from Red Lake, um, and she worked at uh, Head Start most of her life as uh, the gal who would serve the kiddos lunch every day. And I think that um, you know she she would love the fact that you know that she's able to continue to be a part of you know this sort of thing. So I got into animation for a couple reasons. So I, I was that guy who was in his 20s still watching cartoons. And uh, at the time, I was at painting school in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and I was studying to be a painter. I remember uh, seeing this Pixar film called Monsters, Inc. And it was, it was so brilliant to me. I just said, you know what, when I get done with painting school, I want to go to school for that. And for animation, you know, like you can bring your painting skills to the table, you can bring your storytelling skills to the table, and you can flex a little technical muscle in the same time. And, you know, the reaction that I get when I show some of the stuff is just like, just seeing the look on people's faces is almost worth all the, all the work. Any art form, including animation, is going to be uh, a lot of hitting the books, a lot of doing research, find out like the heritage of animation, you know, like uh, like Ray Harryhausen was one of the first animators, Clash of the Titans. He made the the Kraken come to life and did a lot of uh, the Sinbad movies, you know, with like animated skeletons, like no stuff like that. Get to love it and just study hard and work hard. Really hone your craft, and um, you know when you come to uh, the point where you're making, you know, like animations for yourself. You know, that love and appreciation for the craft is gonna show through. One day I got asked to illustrate this book called um, Not a Modding, which, uh, you know, was written by multiple um, Ojibwe language speakers. And, you know, like I said, I'm not a language speaker. Like, I guess I never really thought that I would be asked to be on a project like that. But I, I took it and, uh, you know, I, I worked closely with the team that was responsible for writing the content. And um, it was a really rewarding experience. You know, I felt super blessed that uh, uh, somebody like me, you know, an artist like myself could find himself on a project where I was going to be delivering um, artwork. Uh, that would do some good, you know, like it would really like serve a purpose uh, much bigger than myself. And uh, it also kind of fueled my soul, you know, in a way that I hadn't expected.